Let's begin by looking at the basic anatomy of a .NET MAUI app. Now I say basic anatomy, think about learning anatomy and taking a biology class in junior high versus maybe a freshman level high school class versus, versus a college class and then a med school class, obviously each one of those courses as you progress through those grades and those levels are gonna go deeper and deeper. And there's a lot to .NET MAUI, especially stuff happening behind the scenes that we don't really need to worry about, at least in the beginning stages. So I just wanna look at a basic overview of creating a simple app and the areas that you might need to touch upon in doing so. So I create a map here of the of six destinations in Northern Arizona. We start with the Grand Canyon and in each one of these destinations, there's a button and I can click the button and see a picture of that and then a little caption for that image that talks about what that destination is. So we have Grand Canyon, Hoover Dam, Lake Powell, Monument Valley, Snow Bowl, and West Fork of Oak Creek Canyon. Here is the Solution Explorer in Visual Studio for Mac. It's gonna look this, pretty much the same on the Windows side. But I just wanna point out a couple things. Um, we have a folder here for platforms. There's platforms we write specific code for Android and iOS and Mac Catalyst and Windows. In most cases, we're not gonna do that. Those would be things like if you wanna type into the Bluetooth, you wanna type tap into a particular sensor on one of those platforms, you may need to write some platform specific code. But this course really is about creating cross-platform applications. And so we're gonna write codes that can be shared amongst all these platforms. But if you need to go to some deeper levels, you can do that in the platforms. Resources, we'll use a lot of images in this course. So there's folders here for images, folders for icons, folders for fonts. We might even add in some text strings for localization. So that might be raw assets. So those folders are all things we might delve into, but what I wanna focus down here is at the bottom. And we see some files. We see app.xaml and app shell xaml. Those are sort of our starting point. We won't do a whole lot with those, but we can, as we add pages, we might wanna start with a different page. We can make some adjustments in those. What I wanna focus on here is we're, as we're designing is pages. So out of the box, when we create a new .NET MAUI application, we get a main page and a main page.xaml and a main page.cs. That's our code behind written in C Sharp. There's also a MAUI program CS, so we might make a couple changes there. But we're gonna start with just single page apps and then we'll add in more pages later. Each page would have a XAML component and a CS component. And so the interface is written in XAML. It stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. It's very similar to creating HTML web pages. We use tags for each of the objects and add some attributes in. So to get this interface we see here is done in XAML. But to make the interface work, when I click on Hoover Dam to have it show a picture of Hoover Dam and the caption here, that is done in the C Sharp code behind, which in this case is mainpage.xaml.cs. And in the Solution Explorer, the CS code is always indented underneath the XAML code. You might need to expand that to see the C Sharp code. There is C Sharp code here for app.xaml and appshell.xaml as well. Here's an example of XAML code. This is the XAML code from this application. And so we have some content header information at the top. Notice we're using main page as our class here. We create a scroll view. So in this case, if I had more buttons, there were more information we could see here, I could scroll down this screen and see more items below. In a scroll view, we can have one child object. In this case, it's a vertical stack layout. If you kind of look at this, we have a label here, we have a image, we have another label. Then we have six buttons, and each of these buttons are in a horizontal stack layout with two buttons in each horizontal stack layout. So think of this, looking from the top bottom, we have, in essence, rows. That's our vertical stack layout. Here on the horizontal stack layout, we have some columns. So in that vertical stack layout, we can set things like spacing and padding. Here's my label. So you'll see a tag here of label with a less than symbol and a closing tag of a slash greater than symbol. That defines the label. And then there's a bunch of attributes here or properties that change the appearance and the behavior of that label, how it's located. So again, we wanna make this so it looks good both on Android and iOS and maybe Windows desktop and maybe Mac desktop. So by using these different attributes, we can let each of those platforms decide how this should look best on that particular device. So here we have some text, Northern Arizona and a carriage return and destinations. I can change the color of that text, change the font size, the font attributes, the horizontal options. I want this centered, the font family, 
the horizontal text alignment. I want it centered within the label itself. So label me extends here. I can choose how that text alignment is aligned in that label. The order of these is not important. So you might say, why didn't you put the, the font family before the font size? It really doesn't matter. And there are a lot more attributes than what you see here. Then I have a vertical stack layout. So I have a stack layout inside a stack layout. In this case, I have a vertical stack layout, which consists of the image itself. So I give it a name. I tell it the source. So in that plat in that resources folder that we saw in the Solution Explorer, I have all of my images. So they're embedded in the application itself. We could also have go out to the internet and get an image. I tell it how high I want it to be, what the width should be, and the horizontal options I want it centered. And I put these in a vertical stack layout because I wanted these right next to each other. I want the label just below that. So here's our label. And there's some text here that says change upon load. I'm going to have the text loaded from the C sharp when we first start the application. Again, some attributes. Then I have a horizontal stack layout. And that horizontal stack layout contains two buttons, one for Grand Canyon, one for Hoover Dam. Another horizontal stack layout. One for Lake Powell, one for Monument Valley, and then there's another one below for Snowball and Westport you don't see. So that is how we lay out our applications that, as far as the interface. That might look confusing. It looks like it's a lot of work. It really isn't that bad. And we'll see there's actually um, a panel that can help us do that. Well, I tend to just write everything from scratch and type it into the XAML code. Then we have our C Sharp code. This is the code behind. So I have some strings that I've written in here for each of those destinations. And then all six of these buttons share this one piece of code called change image. And I'm basically taking, figuring out what button was clicked and then using, using a switch case to change the image and the text. Again, there's more below that, but it's basically all the same thing. Very simple to do, and you saw it running. So we talked about pages. There are four types of pages currently in .NET MAUI. Mostly we're going to use content pages. But there's also a flyout page in which we might want to have a flyout menu from the top left where we could click different destinations to go to different pages. This gives us a way of navigating basic pages. There's also a tab page. On the tab page, we'll get tabs at the bottom, at least for iOS. For Android, it tends to put the tabs at the top. So you can change that and have the tabs at the bottom. Again, this is for navigating pages. And then finally, there's a navigational page that allows us to use a hierarchical stack and go through pages, previous, next, and so forth. Flyout pages, tab pages, navigational pages will also use content pages in those environments. So we're going to focus on content pages. Those content pages, though, are simply containers for layouts. The layouts provide placement, then, of the objects that we want to use, which we call views. And we'll look at those in a minute. Stack layouts are probably the most common. And as you saw in the previous example, there was horizontal stack layouts and vertical stack layouts. There's also absolute layouts where we can specify the precise location of every object. There are grid layouts. We can lay out a grid and put items in that grid. Flex layouts and bindable layouts. The layouts in turn then can, can contain other nested layouts, but primarily views. And the most common views we'll probably use in this course can be the labels, images, buttons, scroll views, entries, which is like a text box, box view, and collection view. In the example we have here, we have some labels, the northern Arizona destination, and then the caption underneath the image. We have an image, and then we have six buttons. We also had a scroll view, which allowed us to set this up that if we had more objects, we could scroll through the list. We have about 30 views that are built into .NET MAUI, and you could add in more views available on the internet from other developers, through NuGet packages, through extensions. If you've taken a beginning programming class from me, you know that I like to break things down into input, process, and output. So our views here simply follow along those lines. We have input views uh, to be able to get input from the users. So we have an entry, single line, editor, which allows them to enter multiple lines, checkboxes, radio buttons, sliders, a slider to choose from a range of values, a stepper to go up and down numerically, a switch to turn something on or off, and then a date picker, time picker, and a generic picker. We can just list some objects for the user to choose. For process views, we have buttons and image buttons, and then a search bar and a swipe view, and then lots of ways to do output. 
Now I should mention that some of these other views can also be used for input. So for example, an image, which is an output view, we can arrange to add in the ability for the user to click on that image and have it do something, even though we now have an image button, which used not to exist in Xamarin all the time. We can do the same thing with a label. We can do the same thing with a table view and a list view. We can use those to get user input where they choose an item from a list. But we're gonna think of those items as primarily displaying information. So lots of things here we can use. Uh, by the way, the collection view largely has replaced list view and table view. And um, we can add to that collection view a scroll view to be able to scroll through the list or a refresh view where we wanna pull down from the top of the page to have it refresh the data in a collection view. Maybe we're displaying data from a web server that is being modified in real time and we wanna make our list up to date. Progress bar and indicator bars, is that something going on? We can do box views. I usually use, use those more for placement. Images, we can add borders and frames around things. We can now draw shapes and we can pull up a map, provide a graphic view or we can do some programmed drawing. Blazor web view. Blazor is simply the C-sharp alternative to JavaScript. It's becoming very popular for creating web pages and also backend server-side programming in C-sharp. And then finally a web view. In the next video, I'll give you examples of each of these. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.